Hello you beautiful tea mines, the Assassin for the tea crane here. Today we're just looking at some of our teas and I was um, doing a few tastings and assessments and I came across this very interesting uh, Kamairicha. We have two very great Kamairicha in um, our lineup at the tea crane and I thought I just wanted to to talk a bit about Kamairicha because I do feel that Kamairicha is a bit of an underrated, undervalued type of Japanese green tea and I personally enjoy it very much I think there are a lot of people who enjoy it very much, but there is not enough understanding about what Kamairicha is, um, how it can be enjoyable, and I think this is a great opportunity to talk to you about Kamairicha a little bit and, well, tell you <clears throat> about a few, mo a few items that I think make Kamairicha enjoyable. I'll show you the one that I have here. It's Kamairicha. If you translate it correctly, um, directly, Kamairicha is pan fired tea. It's a green tea that has been pan fired. It's a little bit dark to see well, but I think this, uh, this does it. So, Kamairicha. is this kind of green tea that <clears throat> has a bit of a curly shape. If you compare it to what, for example, Sencha or Kabusecha or Gyokuro look like, then the shape of Kamairicha is totally different. Sencha has these long needle-shaped leaves that then unfurl beautifully in the water. With Kamairicha, you have these curly shapes. And that is simply because Kamairicha is not shaped in the end after, well, as a last stage of the production process of Sencha. So what is, what is specific about Kamairicha is that it's, unlike Sencha, it is not steamed to halt the oxidation process, to stop the oxidation enzyme in order to maintain the green color of the tea it is heated in a large frying pan a wok almost and it's the heat that causes the oxidase enzyme to stop and to prevent the tea leaf from turning brown so we all know this as the kill green process or um, the halting of the oxidation and in Kamairicha, in pan firing, that happens through heating the tea leaf in a frying pan on a large iron or metal surface that is heated from underneath. And the big difference what this does is that Kamairicha, the, the raw tea leaf, when it is heat processed, comes in contact with the heated surface. For Sencha, for example, when the tea leaf is steamed, it goes through a big tunnel, it is, it is pushed through it, but it does not con come in contact directly with the, um, the element that heats it. It comes in contact with the steam, and so it's a more indirect approach and it maintains more of what they would call the authentic flavors and fragrances of tea. When the tea comes in contact with the iron surface, then this will of course cause at some points the leaf to scald, to get maybe a bit burned, to receive flavors and or fragrances and aromas from that heated surface and it creates a totally different flavor and aroma profile for the tea. But that exactly is what I think makes Kamairicha interesting. Kamairicha to me is just as Sencha 
an authentically original and traditional tea of Japan and it the culture and the tradition continues to exist mostly in the southern areas in around Kyushu. The Kyushu island is where most Kamairicha teas are produced and they do it according to traditional methods that have been passed on for generations and it is based on a method that came from China and Korea and so Kamairicha is just as much a traditional approach to tea making as is um, as is Sencha and maybe Kamairicha the, the tradition of Kamairicha would, would actually be longer it would be um, it has a longer history so what do I find so appealing about Kamairicha? Well it is that Kamairicha has this interesting balance between aroma and fragrance and um, a little bit of vegetalness, a bit of uh, bitterness and it's just a lot more aromatic with some nutty fragrances, some toasty fragrances, although not entirely um, intentional perhaps, but it has this broader spectrum of a play of aromas. Whereas Sencha tends to be very plain and straightforward and you've, you've got the grassy greens and the, the little bit of astringency and bitterness and some sweetness here. And with Kamairicha, I think the, the use of the frying pan and bringing the leaf in contact with the frying pan and causing the <clears throat> aromas from the frying pan to get onto the, the leaf, um, cause the leaf to um, adopt other more toasty and nutty aromas. That is what I think makes Kamairicha not only interesting as another spectrum of Japanese green tea, it also makes it very appealing if you are looking for a light yet sweet but balanced and aromatic green tea as a refreshment. We know that especially with Gyokuro, these teas have been enhanced for umami flavors and the reason why they want to keep it as genuine as possible, which, which means that they want to keep it as unaltered and just only maintain the original tastes of the leaf. So through steaming that can be done and no um, outside aromas or, or anything are, are added unwillingly. Uh, through the processing. So by maintaining that base flavor, base aroma, you will focus more on the umami flavor itself. It will get the umami flavor out and be able to enjoy it. But with Kamairicha, you let some other influences um, affect the tea and it just makes it a, an, uh, a more interesting whole. And that is, I think, what sets it apart from each other. So instead of going for a deep umami experience with Kamairicha, you can say, well, I want something refreshing, something a little bit aromatic, and um, just have a relaxing cup of tea, then I think Kamairicha is a great tea. That is why I would like to recommend it to everyone, and why I thought I just should make a quick video, have a quick talk about the, the deliciousness of Kamairicha. And um, we carry two, one from Mi, uh, Miyazaki Prefecture and one from Kumamoto Prefecture. They're, they are both light, refreshing, aromatic, um, a bit nutty, a bit toasty, good balance of sweetness and uh, a tint of bitterness to make it um, refreshing even more. These, these Kamairicha, I like them very much and I think they're undervalued, underappreciated and I would very much like to recommend them to everyone who's watching and with that I think I've, uh, I've given a, a sufficiently brief introduction to 
what I think about Kamairicha and how I appreciate it. And I hope it, uh, it helps you as well. And if it did, please like the video. Also click subscribe so you get updated on new um, videos and you can receive them in the future. And also click the bell so you get the notifications. And let me know, have you had Kamairicha? Do you drink Kamairicha regularly? Or are you looking to try one? Let me know in the comments. I'll be looking forward to reading your comments. And for the time being, brew a cup of tea, create your silence. See you in the next video.